how my stepdad made my mom choose between him and my brothers. So a little background information, I was 13 years old and in seventh grade, and I had two older brothers, Josh and Alex, who were twins and they were both four years older than me. Whenever I was three, my dad left my mom for his dentist. And we never saw him again because he decided to start a whole new family with them. Now, because of that, my older brothers always felt like they had a specific role in my family, especially because the guys that my mom brought home, they would only last a week. Well, finally, my mom met this guy who's really nice and she decided that she was going to get married to him, but he despised my older brothers, mainly because before he moved in with us, my mom would not depend on him for anything. Anything that needed taken care of around the house, my brothers would do it. And we didn't have too much money while this guy was loaded. Like the one time my mom and this guy, who we're gonna call Jerry, got into a fight. Like for part two. Part two about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, my mom and Jerry got into this one fight. And it's a super long story, but pretty much all it made Jerry realize was that he did not have authority over my mother. And she didn't have to depend on him for anything because my brothers would always be there for her. Now, Alex was more of the shy one. Meanwhile, Josh was super hot-headed. And fast forward, my mom and Jerry move in together. That's when we realized that Jerry was super abusive. And Jerry knew that he could pick on Alex whenever he wanted. And most of the time, Josh wasn't home because he literally hated Jerry. The one time Alex came home and he did really bad on this one test. And Jerry was like, oh, he needs to learn discipline, blah, blah, blah. The next day, we all were sitting down for breakfast and we saw Alex come downstairs with a black eye. And that's whenever Josh flipped. He grabbed Jerry, ripped him across the table, and threatened him with a kitchen knife. And my mom called the cops, like for part three. Part three about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, he said he needed to teach some discipline. So he literally out of Alex. And we all didn't know until he came downstairs the one morning for breakfast. But he threatened Jerry with a knife. After that, my mom called the cops. I didn't really do anything but try to de-escalate the situation. But after that, Jerry called a family meeting down to the kitchen table. And he was like, I will not deal with this level of disrespect in this house. He was like, you need to choose between me or them. She was like, well, I'm not going to choose between you or my kids. And he was like, well, then you need to choose them leaving the house. They're about to be 18. They can leave and get their own place. So my mom ended up choosing Jerry because Jerry had a lot of money. And my brothers weren't really that mad about it because it got them out of the house. And my mom would send them a lot of money every month. And Jerry never knew about it. But now instead of him being abusive towards my brothers, he's way more abusive towards my mom. Story time of how I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me with my cousin. My boyfriend and I had been together for two and a half years. His family loved me and my family loved him and they expected us to get married. Well, last year when COVID started, we were actually in different countries, so we didn't see each other for three months. During those three months, we FaceTimed four times a day and we were always texting. He happened to be quarantining in our hometown, so both of our families were in the same place. I was quarantined in a different country. One day, my cousin calls me and tells me that she met a really nice guy on a dating website. I was so happy for her because she had had bad luck with guys. Every single week, her and I would catch up on the phone and she would tell me how much she liked this guy and how amazing their dates were, how sweet and considerate he was. I couldn't be happier for her. Well, when I finally get back home, my boyfriend is super distant and cold. So naturally, I called my cousin and complained. She told me to give him space. She said I should just leave him alone. And so like an idiot, I did leave him alone. One day, my cousin calls me and tells me to come over for dinner. When I got there, my boyfriend's car was parked in her garage. I thought it was just her nice way of trying to get us to talk. Come back for part two. So I walk in on my cousin and my boyfriend. They quickly get up from the couch and get dressed. Of course, by that time, I'm in hysterics. I'm crying and yelling. My boyfriend instantly got on his knees and begged me for forgiveness. I went up to my cousin and I punched her right in the face. She wasn't expecting that. And I said, well, this is the guy that you've been dating, isn't it? She said yes, and that she was just trying to find the best way to tell me. And so she just thought the best way to tell me was to get me to walk in on her and him. I punched her again. My boyfriend came to her rescue, though instantly went into hero mode, which made me even angrier, so I punched him too. I stormed out of her house and went back to my house. Well, I told my parents everything, and my dad went over to my uncle's house, my cousin's dad, and he told him everything. She was about to turn 19, so he took away her phone and her car. And I get a phone call from my ex, come back for part three. So at part three, so my lying, cheating ex calls me and explains to me why he actually slept with my cousin. He said that he was so lonely and that he didn't know what to do and that the closest thing to me he could find was my cousin. Right, as if that was any comfort to me. He said I should be grateful that I didn't cheat with someone else. I told him he had totally betrayed my trust and that I could never ever trust him again. And then he confessed that she was pregnant and that his parents wanted them to get married. He said he just wanted to give me a heads up. Then he said that we could still be together but just not tell anyone. So basically he wanted me to be his side piece. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of his mouth. It was like I didn't know this man. Guess what I did? I recorded the entire conversation. So I went straight to my cousin and I let her listen to it. She was so shocked. She couldn't believe that he would offer to have me as a side chick. 
Well, I also let my uncle listen to it. He went to my ex's house and beat him up. Honestly, that made me sad, but he deserved it. They now have a baby and he's gained 50 pounds. It's your instincts, girl. And always record your conversations. Also, how cute are my nails? <laughs> Am I wrong for revealing my salary and refusing to pay more rent? I, 25 male, have been sharing my apartment with my friend Alex for four years. About two months ago, Alex asked if I was willing to let a friend of his named Sophie move in with us. I agreed because I planned to make a down payment on a house and move out within two years. By having Sophie around, she could take my place and make it easy so that Alex does not have to worry about any increases in expenses. When Sophie moved in, things were good for two weeks until I had to leave for work. This was when she learned that I was a minor and leave for two weeks at a time. When I got back, my problems with her began when she would constantly talk about climate change. She would constantly try to educate us on how and why we should change our habits. The real frustration was when she started going after me and my job. She would constantly say that within 10 years I will have no job. This was accompanied by having this ridiculous and false notion that I am poor and work for minimum wage. To try and help me, she would constantly give me college program pamphlets and job postings to find a better job. The straw that broke the camel's back was when she brought her parents into this. Sophie made her parents think I am poor, which resulted in them calling me to discuss financial assistance. After declining their help and ending the call, I was absolutely livid. I then sat Sophie down and said that all her talk about my job, finances, and education is really pissing me off and to drop it. In response, she said that she is just trying to help someone worse off. This was when I snapped at her and not only told her my salary, but proof I make $100,000 per year. I then flipped the tables on her and went after her degree in environmental justice. I said that it was worthless and she might as well start working at McDonald's to pay off her debt and she will never get a real job. After our argument, we didn't really speak with each other until after I returned for my next work period. Upon returning this week, she started demanding I pay more for rent as I make more and that I should apologize for what I said to her. I refused and said that if she doesn't like me or the arrangements, she is free to leave at any time. I got out of my car to go into a store and this bird started screaming at me and I realized that I'd parked next to one of those like decorative trees decorative i can speak i know words decorative trees in a parking lot there was a nest in it and there were a bunch of baby birds you could hear them so i ran away so as not to agitate the mother but then when i came back i wasn't playing games because the mother bird had perched on a bush right next to my car door and probably i should have just gotten in the other side of the car but instead i walked up to it with my water bottle like this and i was like hey bird hey bird i don't want to fight bird I just want to get into my car. I don't want to fight. Hey, bird. And then I realized there was a lady parked right next to me, halfway in her car, just staring at me. And I don't know if she was judging me because I was scared of a bird or B, talking to said bird or C, if I looked like I was actually ready to whack a bird with my water bottle. 